Welcome to the Kendi and Rainbow Podcast, episode 88, recorded in Kendi's box room. 88, is it? 9, is it Two not? fat young ones, 88. Is it 89? I should have said two fat young ones on the last episode. <laughs> Fuck. I'll check it. I'll is check it, it here. Uh, no, you're right, it's 88. It's two oh, fat young ones. two fat young ones, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back on Zoom again, Ray, to you, like... You kind of said it yesterday, and uh, I said it today before. Zoom is great and all, but Jesus, looking at people's jaws on a computer all day, like, it's tiresome, like. Very tiresome. Um, You had it on the Monday evening. Yeah, I was flashing them out on the Monday evening on the Zooms. Because we had planned, you see. This is now Wednesday, the 11th of November. It is. It's the 11th of the 11th. Yeah. Four skinny young ones. (laughs) You know, it's International Singles Day, I think. Is it? Yeah, us, I think us, so. Us two bollocks are talking to each other <laughs> on this, like, we're going to be out but, there shifting, Ray. What's wrong with us? Uh, no, it, what I was going to say to you was, on Monday evening, we were going to do it. And then we didn't do it, because you had a whole evening of, of things to be at, and it's something you probably want to tell us about. You're doing the comedy course. Yeah, I'm going to get my feet tack level five in uh, comedy. You have your feet tack level five in comedy yeah. already. No, yeah. a, a workshop opened up with the wonderful... Friend of the podcast, John Caleri. And yep. we're supposed to go into the Hawkswell Theatre for six weeks and he's going to teach us how to do comedy writing, Ray. Mm-hmm. Getting in touch with your writing comedy experience. But mm-hmm. we can't do that now, so we have to do it on fucking Zoom. Um, how is it going on the Zoom? It's grand. Like, it's really good. Obviously, he's really good, like, but you wish you were in the fucking Hawkswell about to do it, like, you know? Like, at the end of it, we're going to have to do a seven-minute sketch or fucking stand-up like a stand-up i'm sitting on the chair looking at the computer that's not stand-up like but can we can we all log in to see that because now this is on zoom like when i did my fee tech level five in the comedy uh, it was in carrick and shannon and a limited number of people could come and see me make an arse of myself now the beauty of this now is right that when you do your stand-up at the end of your six-week level five v tech no it's not a yoke that makes toys for young ones <laughs> fee tech level five yeah <laughs> You're going to uh, you're going to give out the link, will you? Will you let us all I come don't and know see you? I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if I'm allowed to give out the link or whatever, or I don't know if we're even going to be doing it that way because the country might be mm. open again. We might we might be yeah. now going to do it the Hawks. But the awkward thing about doing it on Zoom is that everyone's on different like lag. You know what I mean? Oh, so right. I'll tell a joke, like right. I'll tell a mm-hmm. joke, and then there'll be no reaction. And then I oh, like, try me there. Try me there. Try, okay, try me. Okay. Tell us one of you about the jokes. You've been at it now a couple of weeks. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, I'm not like prepared for this, Ray, or mm-hmm. what, whatever, but you know, I mean, I'll, I'll draw one, like, it doesn't matter yeah, to me. Yeah, do one. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even, I'm not even prepared. I'm not right. even prepared, man. Honestly, God, no. I'm Why just, do you look like you're reading uh, something there? Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's what you're talking about. Uh, two things I hate in this world racists and Romanians. That was the funny bit there now. What are you talking about? That's a, that's like grade A. John told me that's, that's the joke. best joke I've ever heard written. Two things I hate I, in the world, racists and Romanians. <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, what's funny about it? It's only fucking feet tack level five. I'm not on level eight yet, <laughs> Ray. Like. <laughs> I don't even understand it. <laughs> and I was told a wise a wise woman told me that if you have to explain the joke, it's not funny. Butcher, I'm explaining the joke to what is the equivalent of an adult toddler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true, that's me. How do you not get okay. the joke? Two things you hate. I don't get it. Two it's things you hate. Races and men. These are two separate things. That's the... F- do you know what, Ray? I don't know how you got that level five at all. <laughs> I don't know how you got that level five at all. Well, what's the, give me the insight into it. What's the joke? It's a one-liner. Why the fuck am I explaining the one-liner to you? This is mental. <laughs> That's the whole idea. It's what they call it. What do they call it? A paradox or something? Yeah, but I've heard paradoxes before that I understand. I don't think I don't see what's the link between the Romanians and the. Ra- oh wait, oh wait. Jesus, <laughs> wait, wait. I'm getting it now. Are you like eating something wrong oh, or something the last couple of days? Sorry, that's how long it took me to get this. Uh, I can't believe that this is actually what's happening here. <laughs> oh, I just gave you. <laughs> I just gave you what is like real grade eight. Like I'm on level five, right? Yeah. And that is definitely a level seven, FETAC level seven uh, Oh, that's, that's, that's a good joke. When, joke. It, when it hits, it's a good joke. That's the, the, there's the lag. Your <laughs> fucking lag is in your head, not on Zoom. <laughs> Ray's got that oh. bad internet lag in his head. I'm crying here. So that's as you can funny. see, that's the kind of quality stuff that Kendi's coming out with, lads. Because mm. um, And you can expect to see me, you know, 
yeah. ever again doing comedy. But uh, <laughs> sorry, Kendi, I didn't mean to be so. No, it is there. what it is. Like, look, I mean, it's meant for a higher uh, intellect. Yeah, well, people. look, it's it's one of those few times where it, look, it's not you, it's me. Yeah, well, it certainly <laughs> is that because it's definitely me there now. Well, one thing I've learned from just having this conversation with you is that perhaps. Um, the best avenue for me not to go or to go down is probably not um, when someone doesn't get the joke to go, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Although we're not good crack out of that, in fairness. But I, I don't, don't know, know how you're going to do that with 16,000 people in the RDS or something, you know? I, I won't be doing that gig till next year or so, Ray. I'm only starting, like, will you start? Yeah, true. Jesus Christ. True. But that's, um, anyway, back to that. That so was Monday evening. Here's another thing as well, why McKendy's mixing it up his head, right? <laughs> Nicola, she make right. a roast every Sunday, Ray. Right. She made a roast on Saturday. Yeah. And I didn't clock it till later that night. And I said, Nicola, why did you make a roast on a fucking Saturday? And she said, Mark, it's Sunday, you bollocks. That's how mixed up it is when you're at nothing. I lost a complete day. And I said to her, where's the day that I just lost? And then that's why you were confused on Monday evening and you weren't ready for it at all when I had booked you at a specific time. Well, that's and I just I just yeah. want to target this now because just remind people now because you made some dele- allegations on Tuesday night that I, I stood you up on the Tuesday because we had arranged to do it on the Monday yeah. and you you lost a day. That was your <laughs> excuse. Of all the excuses you could have used. Ray, I've looked no, all over, sorry, man. I can't, I can't find the day. I can't yeah. find the fucking day anywhere. Yeah, so you lost I still day don't know where that day is, Ray. Where the fuck did I lose the day? Like? <laughs> so anyway, on the, I said, well, we go Tuesday evening and saw it half five. And then on Tuesday evening, then the government kept me late. And it was nearly half six by the time I got on to you. And you were, you, at that stage, you were knee deep in the dinner with Nicola. Anyway, now it is Wednesday. Here we are. And we've managed to get together. But you did say that I stood you up last night. I didn't like that. But you put up some very funny memes. They cheered me up. Well, the great thing is, um, and that was an acting last night. Like, But, I mean, if there's nothing I've learned from social media, and I think anyone has learned from social media, that is if you want attention, be mm-hmm. a victim. So I immediately right. went, I just embraced that victim role. I've raced on me up, guys. Yeah, Please and they helped s- out. Yeah, this I said, send me some nice things that'll make me feel better. And I think altogether we got about 200 memes. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Ross O'Sullivan himself sent 114 in. <laughs> That's Ross, what he's at. Ross, how am I? Number one, why have you got all of them on hand? you just two minutes in. But also, uh, uh, other than the memes, Ray, we asked people, I said to people, here, we're about to record. Why don't you send us in some shice? There was a comment on, I did see an F. Conheedy come in and said something about the, remember the film that we discussed back oh a my while Christ. ago? Yeah, with okay. With Emily's Blunt. I remember we were chatting to Emily Blunt about the whole thing. Yeah, it's so, uh, this is why I'm, I'm worried like about what we're going to say about this, because obviously Emily's a fan of the show as well. And she's a friend of the show now as well. She's been you know? on the show. Rawr. So, if you can all remember, they were filming down in Ballina last year. This time right, last my house. year. Right beside Ray's house. They were hmm. in for Tainside and Ray's house the whole lot. You had, who's that young, f- Jamie's Dornans. Jamie's Dornan, Emily's Blunt, Chris, Christopher's Walken, and your man John Slice. John Ham and Cheese. And yeah. he, and they were down in Ballina filming this while it was supposed to be an absolute blockbuster of a film. A belter now, of a film. Today, this morning, uh, the trailer came out for such film, and it's called Wild Mountain Time. That's right. There has been some reaction on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to Everything. the trailer. Will we play the trailer or will we leave it? Well, I think I think there's one line in the trailer that I think sums it up perfectly. It's towards the end. Okay. Um, if you can find it there, it's her standing talking to the book, Jamie's Dornan. She's wearing, I think, a red cardigan and she's standing at a gate. <laughs> if you could type in red cardigan, standing at a gate, um, toward the end. <laughs> <laughs> How many days do we have while the sun shines? It's not shining. I believe that it is. That is Emily Blunt, an English young lady, speaking in an Irish accent. Her Irish accent, Ray. I've got goosebumps because every time I've, I've watched it three times now today, <laughs> and I had one question. When oh. I, every time I watched it, I was like, did no one at any point when they were based down the West, did no one pull anyone aside and go, lads, this is awful? <laughs> Do you know, do you know the way us <laughs> Irish people were very good at telling people when things are awful? Did everybody hold their tongue and cross my line and say, say nothing, say nothing? No one said say Irish This will be awful crack now when well, it comes here's out. The thing. So, <laughs> listen, there's only, we've only seen a two-minute trailer. So, for all we know, this could still be just an absolute blockbuster of a film and it could be unbelievable. The first thing that people notice straight away... <laughs> the first thing that people notice straight away, and it's not the worst. You can't give out too much. It's hard to do it. But 
there are some questionable Irish accents in it. And I would actually argue that the most questionable Irish accent out of all of them is Jamie Dornan's. I thought it was shock. I was like, And he's, he's from Ireland. He's Irish. For fuck's sake. I know he's from up below, like, you know. Yeah, and both. Just, But just because just you're from up below above doesn't mean that you, you know, he should have at least know the lingo. The funniest of the Irish accents was Christopher Walken. Oh, Did you God. Hear? Indeed. Christopher Walken speaking like Christopher Walken but doing a fake Irish <laughs> accent is the funniest. Have you, any, have you any of it there, have you? Once upon a time, there were two farms. The Muldoon farm where Rosemary lived and right down the road was my farm. He's still Christopher Walken, but doing Christopher Walken as uh, uh, Irish fella. Oh, yeah. you're like, what the fuck? So he didn't change his character. He just said, I'm going to chance this accent. Um, <laughs> Emily, Emily Blunt's is probably the best of them, and you just heard a bit of it there. They, yeah. I think they just think that if you want to give that West of Ireland Irish accent, take out THs and just put in D instead. I, I have a theory. I think, it, I think it might be that if they're releasing this abroad the merch, that they wouldn't be able to understand it if it was done in a proper way. So they have to go that, uh, what you call that, John Cruise film, Home in the Far Away or something or other. Oh, Far that's away. right, yeah. They have to go with the kind of diddly eye, the paddy They have kind of to. They, yeah, have they have to. Ha- yeah. Otherwise, the Americans won't come to visit us. <laughs> you know. But, you know, the only person that got away with it is John, is John Ham and Cheese. Because he because, didn't have to be anyone. Yeah, he didn't have to be anyone. They said, John Ham and Cheese, you can keep your... American hmm. accent, and you can just be an American. You probably then, get the uh, but, Oscar for it now. But here, and the thing is, like, when when is it set, Ray? That's the one thing I haven't been able to suss. No, is is it modern day set? Oh, it is now. Oh, for fuck! What do they think we are? Mm. <laughs> the heads on these. There's one stage where he's talking to a donkey. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's leaning over a gate in a bad no, cardigan. No, like we don't I look like that. The young ones are wearing fucking Nike running gear now. Like, stop, stop for a second. You can't argue with the with the context behind him talking to a donkey. When <laughs> our best friend and regular contributor to the podcast actively talks to a donkey outside his house on a daily basis. That's well, okay, yeah, okay. Derek's best friend is a donkey. Okay, I give yeah. you that. That's a good point to make. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as the dodgy cardigan is concerned, don't tell me that you, have, you haven't seen Manny's a dodgy cardigan down in Bar Square in Balna on a night out with the plane. <laughs> I see many a dodgy buy down there now. I don't know about a dodgy cardigan. But I think that's what they have to put out there to sell it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know, maybe. But I mean, we can't help but laugh at the bastard joke. You're probably oh, right, geez. like. You know what I mean? It is marvellous now. I'm glad now that it's so it's called, well. it's called Wine Mountain Time. Me and Ray are probably going to go see us whenever they let us back <laughs> into the, um, you know, back into the cinemas again just to do it. Um, and you should go and see it as well. Yeah. You know? For Emily. For Emily, because she's a yeah. friend of the show, you know? Friend of the show. Kendi, what about this uh, appearance we did on Monday night then abroad in the Good Friday podcast? That's right. We got called in from across the water, Ray. We have gone international. Yes. We were on an international podcast. An Irish man and an English gentleman. As we alluded to on last week's episode, we didn't know how a relationship like that would work. Mm -hmm. So before they even asked us a question on us, we asked them, how like do you talk to me? I actually asked him, and do you just forget about the 800 years and (laughs) just go ahead like let it, bygones be bygones kind of thing. It, let black tans be un, black tans. Very unsettling experience. They had 40 questions for us and they didn't <laughs> let us off the hook at all. But that'll be out on Friday. It's called the Good Friday Podcast if you'd like to listen to our interview. Yeah, and um, it's available on all of it. The Spotify's, the Apple Podcast, uh, everything. They have a fancy studio as well. Yeah, it's the first time we've ever been on someone else's show, is it? Yeah, it is. I think so. I like Mikey, the wee engineer in the background. That with the big Orlando Bloom's head in him. Yeah, man. He did, but he didn't say much, but he didn't have to, you know? <laughs> he kind of said it all, like, you know, he said it all by saying nothing. All right, that's it. And now they're exactly the kind of people that I like. Ray, come here, actually. <laughs> this is weird, right? I don't know why this came into my head all of a sudden, but I was looking through the news like two days ago, and I came across this unbelievable article, right? Right. And I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read you the headline. Thank you. Massage parlor owner kept giving happy endings despite a guard of warning. Now, that's what... I was online looking at Trump versus Biden, all this kind of stuff. What's happening with the election? How many mm-hmm. people have the coronavirus today? Your man, they're asking Seamus Wolf to step down because he went out golfing. Mm-hmm. And uh, all of a sudden, it's all doom and gloom, and this thing comes up in front of me. Massage parlor owner kept giving happy endings despite a guard the warning. Now, right. let me read you some of this, Ray, because this oh, is do, tremendous. Do. This right? is good stuff. I'm so sorry if I get the pronunciation of this wrong. Kweping Chen, 35, 
What? Who? You're stopping me already. <laughs> What's his name? Is it it's his? a woman. Oh, oh it's, it's a, a woman. woman. Yeah. Qu- K- Quepping Chen, I don't know, that must be a Westmead name or something, of Dorset Street, Dublin, pleaded guilty at the Dublin Circuit Criminal Court to managing a brothel at the Yasmin Massage Parlour on Dorset Street from January 2016 to July 2017. Garda Pauline Trainer told the court that in January 2016, another Garda went into the massage parlour on Dorset Street and posed as a client. Now that is... You could just imagine your man going, no, no, listen now, I'll go in. <laughs> but we'll just go in and serve them a warrant to say that we want, no, 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 no. This has to be a sting operation. I'll go in two or three times and we'll right. see how I get on, you know? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so he goes in, fair play to him for standing, you know, he went into the firing line like... Civic literally. duty. Civic juicy, fair play to the guards. Yeah. I tell you, they're stepping out now. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so then eventually, after a while, they find out that they're given the, you know, they're squeezing yeah. it out like, you know, the frube. But did the guard, did the guard that went in on the civic duty doing the undercover sting operation, did he get the happy ending? I, you see, that's the thing they don't say. He obviously oh, came out right, big happy oh, headings. Came out all right. Sit, sits back into the squad <laughs> car, and they go, "Well, how'd you get?" Out? I think I might have to go back again. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure fully what they're doing. The room was dark. (laughs) Anyway, they find out. They find out that this is the crack that's going on. He must have got it ripped out. I don't fucking know. He explains Mm. to her, the woman, Kwaping Kwaping Chen, happy endings were illegal in Ireland. As if he has to say that, right? And he says to her, you're going to have to stop with any any future sexual acts, right? Including any touching of a customer's penis. And he had to say that's where it stops. Stay right. away from them. She says, no bother. Look, the hands, we won't be giving no hand jobs around here in the movie, right? Mm. Say, not, say no more. I hear you. They go back about a year later and they say, well, Kepping, what's the story there? Um, are you still giving out the hand jobs? And she said, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Chen admitted that happy endings were still being carried out. Then the guardie said to her, you may face criminal proceedings unless you cease to do it, right? Mm. Then she says, look, say no more. I, I get you now. I'm yeah. completely on board. So they land back again another half a year later, October to April. Mm-hmm. How are things quipping? Um, you know, we've already asked you twice, but this is stupid. We shouldn't be here. Like, but <laughs> we're just making sure that you're still not giving out the hand jobs. And she says, Oh no, geez, we are, yeah. <laughs> she must have told there were customers every time they came in. Right. Gardy are getting pissed off now. He's three hand jobs in and he's vexed, right? Right. In July 2017, Gardy returned with a warrant and searched the flat above the massage parlor. So like a wonderful TV show, they burst the door in with their flutes because they're rock at that stage looking around the hand jobs. They rang the doorbell and Mrs. Chen and another woman and one male customer answered the door. All right? three of them answered the door. In the flat ray, not even in the massage parlor. Three of them answered the door. Your man there is standing to salute them. Like that, looking oh. up going, oh, looking at three guards landing at the door and Kepping Chen, whatever her name is, and one of her clients or, and one of her workers are there and they were, you know, attending to a gentleman. Right. He says, Jesus, it's not quite a massage parlor here now that you're running up inside in the flat now. This is a bit weird. They let your man go anyway, which I think is hilarious. Like, he must have been in the flat. Um, Come here, am I in trouble or can I just put my pants on and can I tip off here? Like, And they said, you can tip off, man, because you have been embarrassed enough. Like, you know? <laughs> that was nice of them. So your man leaves during the, during the search. Hmm. They go, you go away, put up pants. The guarantee found seven vibrators four bottles of lube and a ledger with customers' names and details of the transactions and certain requests. Anyway, she ends up accepting that, okay, obviously, i got to do what i got to do. I've got to stop giving the hand job, stop showing vibrators up, fellas' arses upstairs in the flat. Anyway, she agrees to it. <laughs> she ends up getting prosecuted, right? Load of charges against her. I think she gets a suspended sentence, right? It's kind of an Irish thing, though. That's kind of what you do, like, even when you get uh, cautioned in any regard by the Gardaí. You'll just go, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I won't do it again. <laughs> I won't do it again, I promise. And then it will be a year later and you get caught again. You go, oh, feck, shit. Nah, yeah, I know, was, sorry. Mrs. Chen was taking that mentality of landing up to the guards with no tax, like, at a checkpoint. And yeah. going, I fucking, I, I know, I meant to, I know. She was saying, I meant to stop giving the hand jobs age. I promise next time you come back, I won't be doing any more hand jobs. Yeah, I feel you know sorry I mean? for all the lads in the list. I know. That's Fuck. an awful list to be on. Anyway, have you, Anton Ray? I've been uh, talking shite there for about a half an hour. Have you, Anton? A few bits. Go on. You nearly didn't have me this evening as well. Why? I had to go to the dentist today. What, have you a bad feel? I had a bad feel, I had to get a fill in. Oh, fill me in. Fill <laughs> well, there isn't a whole pile of your story to it. But I, <laughs> I was sitting there and I was thinking, I bet you Kendi doesn't enjoy the dentist. Oh, no. So, so here's the thing, right? 
Um, I've had bad fecal since I was a young fella, you right. know, and I didn't take care of them in my teens, and and um, it ended up, you know, being to my own detriment. And um, I've had a lot of work done on my on my teeth. My biggest fear in the whole world, and we've already said this on the podcast before, is needles, right? I was thinking of and you when I got the needle today. Here's the thing: like, even when a vaccine comes out, if someone said to me, "Ken, do you have coronavirus?" right, mm. and it's actually ate in your organs without salt. And it, but if you get this needle here, like you're going to be fine. I'd probably say, look, I've had a good innings. Like, it's, you know, <laughs> let me go. It's grand. Don't yeah. worry about it. I'll, I'll die in peace here. Like, rather than get a needle, I've never had my blood taken ever, and I would freak if I had to get my blood taken. But, you know, but when you go to the dentist, I presume you take the needle. Now, so that's what I'm getting to. Right. I have had so many trips to a dentist since I was a kid, and also now, like, I need to go again. They're really bad, but um, I've had so many trips for fill-ins and different shit to try and fix the damage I did when I was young mm. um, in my adult life. So much so that when... And they're the only needle that's sore, by the way, really. Oh, they're truth, horrible. Because yeah. they drive it straight up into the back of your eyeball. Anyway, mm. listen to me now. Okay. I have no problem getting a needle at a dentist. Oh, yeah. it, it does not phase me because I am so used to getting it in my mouth. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ray, I'm so used to taking it in my mouth that I just... I just it doesn't just, bother you anymore? Nah. No? Just, you know, no more than creping Jen. <laughs> so I n- it never bothers me, you know? No, that's that's all I was... I just want, Why? I was, ha, have you a fear? Have you got a fear of the, the no, pain of that needle? No, it just was a pain in the arse. That's all. Not a pain in the arse, obviously. He didn't pain in the head. The pain, pain in the, in the head, mouth. yeah. I'd, half yeah. my face was, was numb for the afternoon. It's very hard to do anything in that situation. Where you kind of walk around going, Do anybody blood with <laughs> toast? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that. But this, it's funny. I don't know. Do you remember this? But when when they're waiting for the anaesthetic to kick in, they have to make conversation. <laughs> yeah. They have to make because it's a good ten minutes there when they're waiting for you to get numb. And my lovely dentist, his name is Gavin. Gavin today, by some for some reason, forgot what had been spoken about on my last visit, which was about four weeks ago. Right. So it was like he never met me before. <laughs> But come here, that brings up the point, though. You know the way he doesn't recognise you, right? You were yeah. like... You, but you think when he looks into your mouth, then eventually... Just, ah, Ray! But that's what ah. happened. Because even when I when I sat down, he says, what are we doing for you today? It was a bit like going to the, the hairdresser. Yeah, <laughs> just, I said, yeah, just give me a two in the back of molars and... Uh, but the last time I was in there, he says to me as I was leaving, he said, make sure now you'll be back in four weeks because you definitely need that other tooth filled. And I said, no yeah. bother, Gavin, I'll be here. In, f- in four weeks, I'll be sitting here. I come in this morning, he's like, all right, I didn't expect to see you back so soon. <laughs> what do you need well, done? The, yeah, but here's the thing with dentists, like he sees loads and loads of people every day staring into gobs all day feckin' long. Yeah. I just like the idea that he might only recognise you when he sees like you... You go. Oh, I know you now. He did know. know he did now. when he when he when I opened the gob and he looked in. He said, "Ah, Jesus! I know well what you're in for." So that, he that, said, "I know that. I know that breath anywhere." <laughs> ah, Jesus! Great to yourself. Yeah, that back left hand molar. That's that that he's doing now. All right, yeah. Do you ever get the fear that when he leaves the numbness up inside in you, right? <laughs> when he gets all pure numb up inside in you. Yeah. Do you ever fear that he's like, ah, it's probably numb now. I just go drilling, and next yes. thing you get this unmerciful pain. Yes. That's the one fear I do have with the dentist. Because sometimes I feel like it kicks in too quick. Mm. Shove the needle up inside Kendy's gob, right? He goes out the back, takes two pulls out of a fag, <laughs> like that. And he comes back in, he goes, right, we're probably ready to go. And I'm like, no, I've only been here for 30 seconds. Yeah. Get the fucking thing set, man. It's like cement. Oh, that was my worry today now, because he had, he had me well numbed up and he'd run out of conversation. I could tell he was only going at it because he had nothing left to say. Did you ever have to get two shots of it? Yes. Yeah, I've had to get two shots of it before as well, which is grand because you don't even know they're giving you a second shot. No, in so fairness, second, anyway, shot, you know? second shot has no bother at all once you've taken you know, the first shot. It's something to do with your blood, Ray. You know, if you're good tick or something blood, you know, they have to give you a second shot like because it's not taken to us. Oh, you know? yeah. So you're saying me and you have tick blood? Oh, I have good strong stuff, man. <laughs> Kendi's have good everything. We have good blood, good sperms, we are good strong swimmers, the whole lot, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's good, it's good genes. Good genes, you know? I have a few bits here that I want to throw at you. Okay, go on. I have some suggestions. You know the way we don't do a whole pile on Instagram anymore besides just telling the whole world that I stood up and stuff like that? I, I mean, I've learned that if you want content, just get other people to give it to you. Right. Well, I'm going to make a suggestion. I have a couple of challenges that I was thinking we could try and do. Okay. And we might, in, 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 and I just want to run them by you and see see what you think. All right, okay. Are these like TikTok challenges? Well, one of them could be. Like, you could do. we could do a dance-off. Oh, yup. Well, I mean... Would you, you learn a TikTok dance? Well, I mean, I, I would learn straight away now that I win that, so that's easy. If we pull these together, we can let the public decide. Well, okay, well, I know what they'll decide, but yeah, okay, I'm with you so far. So a TikTok <laughs> dance, a, a dance-off, shall we speak. 
Oh, yeah. it's off. It's yeah. off, yeah. And then as well, I'm watching the Bake Off at the minute. Are you watching the Bake Off at all? Don't you be trying out Bake Candy, man. You taste my muffins. <laughs> I, want, I want to do a, a TikTok dance off and I also want to do a Bake Off. Yes. Yes, let's go. Okay, yeah. I'll bake you under the table, Ray. I'll be baked out of it. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, I don't I think so. It. Yeah, but you can't have no ringers now. You can't have people doing it for you. Like. No, no, no. It has to be done yourself, like. Okay. So, okay. would you be confident at a bake-off? Yeah, I'd win that too. Perfect. Okay, that's You're two, very two confident. Zero. Yeah, I'm 2-0. Oh. I'm up 2-0. Oh. Keep going. Give me more. Right. Okay. Uh, I'd like to do a mastermind. Uh, we both pick a certain topic. That's right. And do 10 questions. Welcome to Mastermind, Kendi. What is your topic of choice at Instagram, young ones? Please, thank you. That'd, That'd be, be a good mine. one, you know. Because that means <laughs> I'd have to do a serious bit of research on Instagram, young ones. No, but you pick your own topic on Mastermind. Yeah, but you're right. have to come up with the questions for you. Oh, you come up with the questions. So you can't I come up with the questions. Picking. Okay, Mastermind is an absolute belter of a one as well. It's three nils, Kendi. I would very evidently win that one too. Thank you very much. Right. That's, I don't <laughs> think you're, I think you've been very confident here and it's not really warranted. Nah. But anyway, the last one that I have for you then is um, have you heard of a thing called Prosecco and Paint? Is this some shy thing that a group of women do where they get, is this like a party thing? <laughs> kind of. They paint yeah. a room and drink Prosecco. Yeah. So what, what happens f- is anyway, you drink a scatter of Prosecco and you get yeah. absolutely shammed out of it. And while drinking the Prosecco, you have to paint something. Paint what like a room? Well, no, not no. I'm not. Ta- you're not doing any home improvements here. Oh, man. You, yeah. This is like a like paint a new body or paint a plant or yeah, paint a plant a, or something. Know, yeah. I don't know why I said new body first. Anyway. Go on. Anyway. <laughs> but I was going to do. We could do a prosecco and paint, <laughs> right? So these are some of the ideas that that I w- like them. Yeah, I really like them. Yeah. Now the only thing about the prosecco and paint is whatever you have paint, right? I don't know if you noticed this on Castle Street there in Sligo. There's a post office there in Castle Street in Sligo, and they're selling. One of our good friends, uh, Eddie Lee, he has a rake of prints of, of like things he's taken photos of and they're very spectacular. Oh, and they're tremendous. They are for sale in the window of Castle Street Post Office. Yeah. I'd like to suggest that our two paintings would be um, also placed on the window of said post office <laughs> and we would be looking to sell them and the, the we'll say the, the proceeds could go to the Northwest Hospice. Yeah, let's a hundred percent. And my favorite thing about that idea that you have, Ray, mm-hmm. is that I love the fact that like this is Eddie's life, you know. Yeah. And he's so good at it, and um, like really beautiful pictures. And we're just going to completely undermine that by just leaving shite in beside him <laughs> as well. It might help his stuff and, to sell. And then just say, "Well, Eddie, what's the crack, man? We have our York there as well now." <laughs> and he's going, "I mean, I've been working on this shit for years, like." Yeah, but you're, you're underestimating the level of of the painting acumen that we might be bringing to this. We might be unreal. Yeah, I'm going to paint a car and go paint a house where Mammy is in the house as well, okay? <laughs> and the sun is shining because we're all so happy. Yeah, well, the winner the winner of this competition will be the one who sells for the most monies. Oh, right. Or That's brilliant. Maybe the fir- no, no, sorry. The winner of this competition will be the first painting to sell. Okay. Now, you see, okay. that doesn't work either, does it? Because sure, Nick, they could go in and buy it, and that'll be that. You win. <laughs> yeah, it has to be for the most money. It has to be for the most money. But then we can't really do it like that. We have to do a bidding ward and so, don't we? Yeah, but sure, if it goes up to £200, that goes to Northwest Kendi, shouldn't that, you know, yeah, I suppose, that the way to go? I suppose we might have to go on auction instead of uh, for sale in the post office. Ray, I think we're kind of... Um, we're complicated, the by, it, yeah. No, we're jumping the gun by thinking that either of them would actually sell. True, true. Although Ed Sheeran's <laughs> paid something there recently and it sold well. Ah, yeah, but Ed Sheeran, of course it sold like. I mean, if he took a shite into a pair of jacks, it'd sell, man. <laughs> Yeah, true. Fuck's sake. That's what you're up against. <laughs> that is, I suppose, what you're up against. So, yeah, so that that was my suggestions anyway for, for things we could do on the Owl Instagram in the near future. Which would you like to start with? I think let's start simple with the Instagram one because we can't go near each other. And I think perhaps one of the first two, a bake-off or a dance-off. Right. I think we'll go dance-off. <laughs> uh, I have some hip spike. Uh, and some cheeks, too. Oh, but I have the little head. chicken legs. Yeah, and also you have like you know you, your Bjor does some of those dances. Yeah, so she can teach you. Yeah, see, I have a teacher. Yeah, oh fucking hell! Mm. I don't need no teacher, man. But I sure, got Nicholas, this natural. Nicholas knows all the old TikTok dances too. She'd be well able to show you. Yeah, but you see, she would be trying to contain raw talent that is just bursting out of me. I think I just have to feel it. Right, you know? right. Other than that, Ray, we got invited once we're allowed to cross county borders again. Right, we're doing a winter's day. At a farm in Cassery, right? 
Oh, so we a, could even make that a competition as well if you want. Who's the better farmer, Raybo or Kendi? And there'd be a series of challenges. Yeah, or a cultural correspondent. We haven't Trev. seen him in two years. Yeah, but he came out. He was in hibernation. He there was on maternity leave, was he not? Farmers sleep for two years <laughs> at a time, and then they come out again when there's a few bits to be done. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a few. There's a few grants to be t- uh, availed of as well. They mm-hmm. always come out when the grants are there, and uh, we're going to go down, and he's going to put us. You probably he just wants to see me be miserable, but we can make a comp out of it, Ray. Right. You know, you have a bit of farming background again, like, but I got that grit, you know? Yeah. No, I'll, I'll Not do afraid that of hard you. work. Have you even got All Wellingtons? Right. Uh, I'm going to buy Wellingtons. I think Calvin Klein do them or something. I'll buy them. I'll you buy them for I know what to get you for Christmas and so. <laughs> Um, Ray, should we talk a little bit, talking of all these kind of competitions and stuff, should we talk about our Patreon? I suppose it's time he's mentioned it, isn't it? Listen, me and Ray have been bouncing around this idea of setting up a Patreon for definitely a year or more. Or more, yeah. Actually, if you see our Patreon page, it was actually set up in February 2019. Yeah, it was. And then we just did nothing with it because there's that old Irish mentality of how dare you ask for something. You know well, what I mean? That was my problem. But I also, I couldn't figure out how to finish it. As in, I, I started <laughs> setting it up and then I got totally confused and it just sat there ever since. But here's the point. You're always afraid of asking for something, but we're setting up Patreon because we love doing this shit and we've been doing it for nothing for three years now nearly. Nearly. How long have we been doing it for? Yeah. Two and a half. Two and a half years. Mm. So you owe us a few pounds is what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's no panic with it. Like, you know, we know Christmas is coming oh, and things are tight. Yeah. But lads, you know. <laughs> yeah, we'll be knocking doors soon. Here's the crack. We're going to yeah. try and give incentive. Like, we're going to be doing, like, posts just on that Patreon page as well. Mm. And, uh, like, little live Zoom streams, all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? That you can tune in and watch. But there's options there. If you want to become a patron of Kenji Rainbow, we would absolutely love it because... Um, you know, this is harder than it seems to do. It is. You know? And I've no work now. Let's feel sorry for me again. <laughs> no, S- you're playing the victim me- card. Just send me memes and money, please, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah. Doctor. Just me some memes and some money. Anyway, uh, so just go to patreon.com forward slash the Kendi and Raybo podcast. Yeah. That is patreon.com forward slash the Kendi and Raybo podcast. And uh, there's a few options there if you want to join or whatever. There's a, there's, there's a wide range of options. You can be a co- become a VIP patron. You can if you if you become a VIP patron. Can you cook your uh, breakfast two mornings a week? <laughs> you will get live videos and all that kind of shit from us because we're trying to kick this thing into gear. Yeah. You know, you have people like the two Johnnies there and Tommy and Hector who are just walloping us out the door and we're way better than all of those lads. So we're trying to just catch up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to see if we can make something of this thing because yeah. we've been arsing around with it for two and a half years. So patreon.com forward slash Kendi and Rainbow Podcast if you want to get that. Yeah, and all funds will go to Kendi. Yeah, yeah, Ray is not taking any of it. I know that's going to put people at ease because he has this big government job. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing right now. Yeah, that's it. You know? It's all going to Kendi, and sure, look, if it pays for the wedding, sure, all the better. Yeah, because nothing else is going to pay for the wedding, so you have to pay for Kendi's wedding. That should be <laughs> that should be incentive. What would be marvelous though if you got to if you got to next year and you had a big pile of money sitting there in the Patreon account going, "This is great." <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> now the important thing is the podcast is you have to get exclusive access. It'd be like the Hello Magazine. So you'd have the yeah. whole crew from the podcast having to be there with the cameras and everything, recording bits of, bits of stuff. Yeah, yeah. We're, but, but they will be behind a rope, like, or a bit of shield or something. Yeah. Actually, they're not coming. I'm not touching them around like that. <laughs> Some of them are dirty, Ray. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, now that that's done, I think we have to, Ray, unfortunately, we, like, we're coming towards the end of the podcast. So we do have to get serious for a couple of minutes. No, yeah. we hate doing this, me and you. Mm. Have you got anything else just before I do this? No, I have nothing else. Just the bitterness about this. That's all I've got left. I know. Uh, Ray, let's just try and... Um, we just have to get through it. They have to find out about it eventually. They're going to hear about it in the papers and stuff anyway. So yeah. um, it came to our attention that another podcast out there um, used some of our material um, blatantly, blatantly, really quite blatantly, and, and pretended that it was their own and tried to get a workaround of that it was their own. And yeah. then they immediately backtracked when they realized that there was going to be um, trouble in doing it. Oh, and they got a letter from the solicitor. Yeah, they got it. Well, we're going to get into that. Right. We'll get into that, right? Okay, because we don't, you can't give too much away because it's obviously a court case that's going to be pending yeah. or whatever. Um, we can't say too much, but it is, it's the In the Lamplight podcast. Yeah. And uh, they used, they used one of our signatures and um, obviously it was brought to our attention. They tried to apologize and backtrack straight away on the next episode, but uh, the damage had been done. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Ray can't say too much about this because <laughs> there is an impending court case, but we have just drawn up a little statement that. When this is done, we can't hear anything else from me. So we're just going to read out this little statement and um, make up of what you will. Right. 
In light of recent developments regarding the theft of creative and intellectual property by the gentleman over at the Lamplight Podcast, we would like to give our perspective on the matter. We here at the Kenji Rainbow Podcast understand the level of our influence onto those huge numbers of people all over the world. We are, of course, one of Sligo's top 50 podcasts, and that influence spills across many landscapes, from Caltra all the way out to Grange, and then it kind of stops there because you're heading into Donegal and sure, who wants them on board anyway? It has come to our attention that a new podcast has used some of our trademarked intellectual properties, namely our signature sign-off, Fair play to me, and fair play to me. Good luck, good luck. <laughs> Although we are flattered that a small-time podcast would take influence from us big-timers, creative theft is no laughing matter. <coughs> Tugging on our coattails and asking for a boost-up is all good and well, but you, we cannot stand by and let this blatantly steal what is ours under the Trademark Act of 1996. Oh. We have initiated legal proceedings with the In the Namplight lads, and we have a team of lawyers handling the case, including Johnny Cochran, Robert Kardashians, and that lad in every group who did the FETAC Level 5 in law. Although we can't talk too much about the case, all we will say is, Rory, get ready to hand over all your cameras. <coughs> Luke, don't become too attached to that studio because it's going to be ours soon. And Quinn, that's a nice little team night you have there. It would be a shame if we were to be hosted by, let's say, oh, uh, Kendi or Rabo. <laughs> to finish up, please, no more press. No interviews will be conducted during the proceedings of the court case and family flowers only, please. So that is just our little statement there going out. Obviously, we can't say too much more on that. Well, I, like, um, I could add something to the end of it. You said family flowers, please, only, please. Yeah. I said donations if desired to the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing, Ray. Stop now because we're taking this seriously. Donations if required to the Patreon, please. Uh, <laughs> that was a well-worded statement. I didn't realise you'd pull that together, Kendi. Well, it's just a very serious matter, you know. Like, yeah, um, I don't think I'll say it to you now. Just, just as an aside, I know we hadn't really, we talked about it at length. But just, with, you know, the whole there's a threat there to take the old team nights off, Quinn. I wouldn't be so quick to do that. Right. They're a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're a lot of work. Like, don't get me wrong, they're a lot of work. I mean, they're great, but yeah. I wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like you know, when someone's parents dying. They, oh, they left me the house, like. Yeah. Yeah. The property tax there is one hundred and fifty grand. Yeah. On this, yeah, it's a lot like, of work. Yeah, and as far as Rory and the cameras are concerned, they're hard to use. That was it for episode uh, Two Fat Young Ones 88. We're going to sign off with our trademark sign off. Yeah. Um, because we feckin' own it. That's right. Uh, Ray, fair play to me. And fair play to me. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>